United Nations Interim Administration Mission in Kosovo The United Nations Interim Administration Mission in Kosovo is the officially mandated mission of the United Nations in Kosovo. Currently, UNMIC describes its mandate as being to help the Security Council achieve an overall objective, namely, to ensure conditions for a peaceful and normal life for all inhabitants of Kosovo and advance regional stability in the Western Balkans. UNMIC was established pursuant to Security Council Resolution 1244, which was passed on June 10, 1999. In that resolution, the UN decided to deploy, in Kosovo, under United Nations auspices, an international civil and security presence. UNMIC still exists today, but its day to day functions are relatively minor since Kosovo declared independence and adopted a new constitution and following the creation of the European Union Rule of Law Mission in Kosovo, which itself operates within the framework of Security Council Resolution 1244. ULEX assists and supports the Kosovo authorities in the rule of law area, specifically in the police, judiciary and customs areas. In September 2012, international supervision ended, and Kosovo became responsible for its own governance. The Assembly of Kosovo adopted the Declaration of Independence on February 17, 2008. Kosovar Serb parliamentarians boycotted the session. Kosovo is the subject of a long running political and territorial dispute between the Serbian government and Kosovo's largely ethnic Albanian population. A clear majority of the Kosovo's population support Kosovo's independence. Internationally, of the United Nations 193 member states have recognized Kosovo's independence. The head of UNMIC is the special representative of the Secretary General and is appointed by the Secretary General under the advice of UN member states. Zahir Tanin, an Afghan diplomat, has been the SRSG since August 19, 2015. UNMIC has been divided into four sections which it calls pillars. These are Responsibility for enforcement of pillars 1 and 2 has now been transferred to the institutions of provisional self-government in Kosovo. The UN, however, still monitors this enforcement. Following a major internal restructuring of its activities, this pillar structure underwent a change. Pillar I was dissolved causing police commissioner and the director of the Department of Justice to report to SRSG instead of DSRSG as previously. Pillar II was reduced to a Department of Civil Administration and its director also reporting directly to the SRSG. UNMIC oversees a substantial UN international police force numbered at approximately 1,985 including formed police units. A NATO-led force called for provides an international security presence in support of UNMIC's work, but is not subordinate to the UN. The European Union-led economic development includes the privatization of former government enterprises. This policy has been opposed by Belgrade. This was formerly carried out by the KTA and EU organization with Jasper Dick as managing director. Since 2008, this role of the KTA has been taken over by the Privatization Agency of Kosovo. Resolution 1244 directed UNMIC to. As described above, UNMIC no longer performs all of these functions. The UNMIC has been criticized for failing to achieve many of its stated objectives and is widely resented by both Kosovo Serbs and Kosovo Albanians. After seven years of work, in June 2005, a BBC article suggested that the European Roma Rights Centre were to sue UNMIC over the treatment of Roma refugees. In July 2006, a book, Peace at Any Price How the World Failed Kosovo, written by two former senior staffers at UNMIC, exposed a catalog of errors and incompetence in the institution over its seven-year history. A UN-led political process began in late 2005 to determine Kosovo's future status. Belgrade proposed that Kosovo be highly autonomous and remain a part of Serbia. Belgrade officials repeatedly said that an imposition of Kosovo's independence would be a violation of Serbia's sovereignty and therefore contrary to international law and the UN Charter. Representatives of Kosovo's ethnic Albanian majority asserted that Kosovo must become independent, arguing that the violence of the Milosevic years made continued union between Kosovo and Serbia impossible. UN Special Envoy Marti Atizari, a former president of Finland, leads the status process with Austrian diplomat Albert Rahan, his deputy. Atizari's office, the UN Office of the Special Envoy for Kosovo, is located in Vienna and includes liaison staff from NATO the European Union and the United States. The initial status negotiations focused on technical issues important for Kosovo's long-term stability, 
particularly the rights and protection of Kosovo's minorities. Atisari brought the parties together for the first direct dialogue in February 2006 to discuss decentralization of local government, an important measure in the protection of Kosovo Serb communities. Subsequent meetings addressed economic issues, property rights, protection of Serbian Orthodox Church heritage and institutional guarantees for the rights of Kosovo's minorities. On July 24, 2006, Atisari brought the parties together in Vienna for the first high-level talks on the status outcome itself, where the parties presented their respective platforms for Kosovo's future status. Serbia was represented by its president, Boris Tadic, and prime minister, Vojislav Kostunica, while Kosovo was represented by its president, Fatmir Seju, and prime minister, Agim Saku. Atisari later told the press that the meeting resulted in no breakthroughs, but added that the discussion was frank and candid and the atmosphere was better than he could have expected. Atisari briefed contact group foreign ministers on September 20, 2006, in New York City at a meeting chaired by U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. At that meeting, the contact group released a press statement that reaffirmed its desire to work towards a negotiated settlement in the course of 2006 and also endorsed Atisari's plans to develop a comprehensive proposal for a status settlement. As the end of 2006 neared, and despite progress on technical matters, both parties remained diametrically opposed on the question of status itself. On February 2, 2007, Atisari delivered to representatives in Belgrade and Pristina a draft status settlement proposal. The proposal covered a wide range of issues related to Kosovo's future, in particular measures to protect Kosovo's non Albanian communities such as decentralization of government, protection of Serbian Orthodox Church heritage, and institutional protections for non Albanian communities, which would remain in place for at least three years. Whilst not mentioning the word independence, the draft included several provisions that were widely interpreted as implying statehood for Kosovo. In particular, the draft settlement would give Kosovo the right to apply for membership in international organizations, to create a Kosovo security force and adopt national symbols. Atisari conducted several weeks of consultations with the parties in Vienna to finalize the settlement, including a high-level meeting on March 10, 2007 that brought together the presidents and prime ministers of both sides. After this meeting, leaders from both sides signaled the total unwillingness to compromise on their central demands, concluding that there was little hope of the two sides reconciling their positions independently. Atizari said he would submit to the UN Security Council his own proposed status arrangements, including an explicit recommendation for the status outcome itself, by the end of March. Most international observers believed that these negotiations would lead to Kosovo's independence, subject to a period of international supervision. Nevertheless, Russian President Vladimir Putin stated in September 2006 that Russia might veto a UN Security Council proposal on Kosovo's final status that applied different standards than those applied to the separatist Georgian regions of South Ossetia and Abkhazia. The Russian ambassador to Serbia asserted that Russia will use its veto power unless the solution is acceptable to both Belgrade and Kosovo Albanians. In a survey carried out by UNDP and published in March 2007, 96% of Kosovo Albanians and 77% of non-Serb minorities in Kosovo wanted Kosovo to become independent within present borders. Some 78% of the Serb minority wanted Kosovo to remain an autonomous province within Serbia. Just 2.5% of the ethnic Albanians wanted unification with Albania. Separately, the UN Refugee Agency made contingency plans for up to 70,000 further Serbian refugees in the wake of any successful independence claim by Kosovo Albanians. In early May 2007, European members of the UN Security Council, Germany and the United States circulated a draft UN Security Council resolution that would replace UN Security Council Resolution 1244 endorse Satizari's proposals and end the UN administration of Kosovo after a transition period of 120 days. The U.S. permanent representative to the UN said that the European U.S. draft had enough support in the Security Council to be adopted unless Russia chose two objects. The contact group said that, regardless of the outcome of the present negotiations, a new international civilian office will be established in Kosovo to take up the civil administration provided for under UNSCO 1244 supervise the implementation of any status settlement and safeguard minority rights. NATO leaders said that the presence of KVR will be maintained in Kosovo after any status settlement.
the EU will establish a European security and defense policy rule of law mission to focus on the policing and justice sectors. As of early July 2007 the draft resolution, backed by the United States, the United Kingdom and other European members of the Security Council, was rewritten four times to try to accommodate Russian concerns, and despite talks between the presidents of Russia and the United States. Russia stated that it would not support any resolution which was not acceptable to both parties. Representatives of the states backing independence expressed hope that agreement can be found amongst the Security Council. One Western diplomat, quoted by a British newspaper, offered an opinion on the state off negotiations, I wouldn't say it was game, set and match to the Russians but it is game and set. Whilst the draft resolution on Kosovo's status had yet to be endorsed by the Security Council, senior U.S. officials had been suggesting that an agreement might be reached by 2008. The U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for European Affairs told delegates at a NATO conference in Croatia that he hoped that Kosovo's future could be resolved in the months leading up to the alliance's next summit meeting in Romania in April of that year. Were the draft resolution to fail, observers had been speculating that fresh talks between the parties might follow. On Monday, July 16, 2007, after many weeks of discussions at the Security Council, Russia rejected a fifth draft of a Security Council resolution based on the Atisari proposals. British and European Union officials suggested on July 17, 2007 that a final draft would be presented within days in an effort to secure Russian support. European Union foreign policy chief proposed new talks between Belgrade and Kosovo Albanians if this final draft failed, lasting for a period of four months and under the guidance of the contact group of leading nations. Concerns remain that a failure to secure a resolution favorable to Kosovo Albanian opinion might lead to violence in Kosovo, including in the period up to a possible election in November 2007. Kosovo newspapers Ari suggested, Reuters reported, that contact group nations might be considering an international conference on Kosovo in September in Paris. The United States, United Kingdom and other European members of the Security Council formally discarded a draft resolution backing Atisari's proposal on July 20, 2007, having failed to secure Russian backing. Kosovo-Albanian leaders reacted by proposing unilateral independence for November 28, 2007, though the UN would be required to overrule any such action. Recognition of any unilateral declaration of independence would likely be of central importance, though U.S. officials have indicated that they might support such a move. European nations have argued against unilateral moves by either side. French Foreign Minister and former UN Kosovo chief, Bernard Kushner, warned that a unilateral declaration would split the European Union over recognition of the independence, whilst U.S. State Department spokesman Sean McCormack commented that, there is nothing to be gained by short-circuiting the diplomatic process that is underway. Violence is feared in Kosovo should Kosovo-Albanian demands for independence not be met. Despite the deadlock, the European Union has already drawn up plans to admit the province. A 72-member European Union delegation with 200 local support staff would have a mandate to oversee implementation of the UN plan. An EU chief representative would continue to perform the same duties as the SRSG, with veto power over government decisions and the authority to fire officials found obstructing the implementation of the UN Security Council resolution. After being posted to the UN Kosovo mission as a corruption fighter, James Wasserstrom was later dismissed after reporting misconduct of UN personnel in Kosovo. After the war ended, the UN Security Council passed Resolution 1244 that placed Kosovo under transitional UN administration and authorized KVR, a NATO-led peacekeeping force. Almost immediately, returning Kosovo Albanians attacked Kosovo Serbs, causing some 200,000 to 280,000 Serbs and other non-Albanians to flee. Many displaced Serbs are afraid to return to their homes, even with UNMIC protection. According to Amnesty International, the presence of peacekeepers in Kosovo led to an increase in the trafficking of women for sexual exploitation. In 2001, UNMIC promulgated a constitutional framework for Kosovo that established the provisional institutions of self-government, including an elected Kosovo Assembly, Presidency and Office of Prime Minister. Kosovo held its first free, Kosovo-wide elections in late 2001. UNMIC oversaw the establishment of a professional, multi-ethnic Kosovo police service. In March 2004, Kosovo experienced its worst inter-ethnic violence since the Kosovo War. 
The unrest in 2004 was sparked by a series of minor events that soon cascaded into large-scale riots. This event was the motive for protests since no one was ever arrested nor personally accused in the case. Protesting, the Kosovo Albanians mobs burned hundreds of Serbian houses, Serbian Orthodox Church sites and UN facilities. Kosovo police established a special investigation team to handle cases related to the 2004 unrest and according to Kosovo Judicial Council by the end of 2006 the 326 charges filed by municipal and district prosecutors for criminal offenses in connection with the unrest had resulted in 200 indictments convictions in 134 cases, and courts acquitted 8 and dismissed 28, 30 cases were pending. International prosecutors and judges handled the most sensitive cases. Employees of the Yugoslav government have since 1999 been receiving a stipend called Kosovsky Dodatic. On February 17, 2008, Kosovo declared independence, Kosovo Serb parliamentarians, boycotted the session. Serbian Prime Minister Vojislav Kostunica responded by stating, Today, this policy of force thinks that it has triumphed by establishing a false state. In August 2008 after the Kosovo constitution came into play, the UN decided to cut staff levels by 70% during a UN reconfiguration in the country. Much of the UN powers in Kosovo were transferred to the Kosovo government and the EU policing mission in Kosovo called ULEX. Plans for UNMIC to hand authority over to the ULEX mission after Kosovo's constitution was approved faltered as a result of Russian opposition to Kosovo's unilateral declaration of independence. The UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon decided to reconfigure the mission for a temporary period. Reportedly, the UN will give way to the EU mission in Albanian areas, but retain control over police and Serb inhabited areas and set up local and district courts serving minority Serbs. The move is in response to opposition to the EU presence in North Kosovo and other Serb dominated areas. In December 2008, the European Union Rule of Law mission in Kosovo assumed most of UNMIC's roles, assisting and supporting the Kosovo authorities in the rule of law area, specifically in the police, judiciary and customs areas. As of March 2011, UNMIC's recent work includes the overseeing the liquidation and privatization of failed businesses. The World Bank and the International Monetary Fund granted membership to Kosovo in July 2009. Membership with the World Bank, under the aegis of Ranjit Nayak the World Bank representative in Kosovo, has resulted in Kosovo being treated by the World Bank as its 186th member country instead of being under United Nations Security Council Resolution 1244. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.